So, hi guys, how are you? Suzy the dad and here. I'm glad and I'm grateful to God that we have another opportunity to share our lives. This channel we said it's all about positivity, living positive regardless. Doesn't matter the point at which you are in life, but you keep it positive all the way. So I, I so I also understand. That's why I'm saying mm -hmm. it's a very close call. Mm -hmm. There there is when there are those who are so worldly, there are those who are not in it. Mm -hmm. And there are those of us who are in it. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we are agreeing that uh -huh. there, there should be a romantic yes. relationship. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, wow, that mm -hmm. is good. Now, mm -hmm. man of God, there's something mm -hmm. you've said I want you to, to talk about it mm -hmm. a little bit. Huh? Mm -hmm. Now, in church, huh? mm -hmm. because we are talking of this because we want to help young people. Yes, because yes. Of mm -hmm. What is already happening mm -hmm. out there? Mm -hmm. We don't want to close our eyes and say, mm -hmm. Oh, when you are in church, but those who are in God, let's not be talking about church. Mm -hmm. those who are in God, huh? mm -hmm. We don't want to close our eyes and say, It's not happening mm -hmm. to them. Mm -hmm. It is happening that mm -hmm. we are mm -hmm. fighting mm -hmm. every winter. Yes, it is yes, happening. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, there is this issue of mm -hmm. you've been given a prophecy. Mm -hmm. I married this guy, or oh, not even married. I'm in a relationship because the man of God said, I said, go, go out to this one. Yeah, I see. <laughs> yeah. How is that? I, I think, um, you see, prophecy, and uh, I think I have some authority to talk about that one because I prophesy, right? Prophecy, if not understood, can be a source of trouble to the saints. Right? For example, when you look at uh, the scripture in First Corinthians chapter 14, you begin to look from around verse 21 downwards, Brother Paul realizes prophecy was an issue of problem in Corinth, the church in Corinth. So he tells them something very exciting. He tells them if one of you prophesies, let there be at least two more who will confirm the same word. Those are called checks and balances. Now, in a scenario where there are no several people prophesying and confirming, this is how I look at it. You see, prophecy will always witness in your heart. The primary guide of the saint in the New Testament, and now in the New Testament is the ministry under the, this new dispensation after Christ has died and resurrected. The primary guide and leader of the saint is the Holy Spirit. So this is how you discover. If I come to prophesy to you, no matter how you see and prophecy i think at times problem in Nigeria. me as a prophet it's whether I'm, it's word of knowledge where i have to talk of the past and the present so i know things that it can only take god for me to know or it's word of wisdom where i will tell you someone is coming and this is how they'll come and all that one it's discerning of spirit is all those you discover when i come to you the lord loves you too much this is what we forget god does not just love the prophet God loves the one, the recipient of the prophecy. Too much. That you remember I have emphasized on the relationship with him. That if you have a relationship with him, he will witness. That's why God never left us hanging. He said, for example, when you look at first um, Thessalonians chapter 5, uh, you begin to look from around verse 20. He talks of us not quenching the spirit, but also us testing all prophecy. You see, you don't test by saying, uh -huh. you test by the witness in your spirit. I hope it's not complicated. Maybe we will still want to know what you mean by the witness in your spirit. The, the witness I in, have that conviction. The witness in your spirit, mm -hmm. you see, God is personal. Mm -hmm. yes. So there is how God talks to you. She didn't want to end because our own be, our fast. They don't have a relationship with their scriptures. They don't belong to a church where they can be taught to hear the voice of God. But when the majority of the time wana say, "Mami, niki niki skia vizuri, mitajui kona mungu. Ispo skia vizuri, mitajui hai kona mungu." That's that's oh, that, that's I'll be very patient. That <laughs> that's one of the least levels of Christianity. Like you need a serious deeper level. I believe as on a grow come as Susan, as on a grow come as fire, I begin to understand how God deals in me. So that discover kuna mpiota kwa mbia, kuna peace, nasikianga, kuna impression, nasikianga kwa mbunyangu, kwa kitu nasikianga nani yangu. And it's beyond physical. There is that witness. This is the Holy Spirit akondani yetu. 
kuna hiyo for example when a young man I, when a young man anasema God has told me I should marry you I think no one should complicate that one anyone can compare God has told you you marry them it's very simple why not request them to tell God to tell you too si alikuwa amemwambia na si alimwambia ni wewe the same way alimwambia why not talk here and amwambie eh Mungu pia mimi u ongeleshe huo moyo una get and i should be patient enough because if it's god i end anywhere mm-hmm. sure but sina tuko na watu wenye because of nimekuambia niletee seed nikwambie mm-hmm. bring and i see you prophesy mm-hmm. because we have come up with all that thing because believers are lazy mm-hmm. so what to the two parties here to blame is the prophet mm-hmm. and the prophesied to the prophet p like <laughs> the two. so so when the prophet tells you you must be married by this person mm. i have discovered for the will of god to be a success mm. after god has spoken mm. that he needs men and women mm. to agree with him for the will to thrive here yes. for example i may say to someone god wants you to marry this person is the will of god mm. but and now our to it here and they agree they go and they start a relationship but if these people don't grow in knowledge wisdom na understanding their relationship na marriage mm. they will fight like people who are not in the will of god mm. because the will of god thrives in the zone of knowledge mm. yeah. where knowledge is accurate mm. the will of god in a father room ya ku prosper yeah. so i so i think now yeah. may simplify now you you yeah, may simplify mm. i understand it mm. because we may sema vizuri sana mm. Mm. there is a way of kila mtu they know how god speaks to mm. them mm. so when i'm given a prophecy mm. i can tell when god mm. now has mm. confirmed it yes, 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 yes. i think that is uh, that mm. is easy so kuna kazi ya kujua voice ya mungu yeah i mm. see mm. so uh, i think the challenge here is mm. you don't uh, rely on prophecies if you yourself you can't hear god I mean, it's trouble. because you will be given you can pick anything mm. because you don't have a witness and you nasikia nikisema pia the prophet because now as we begin to grow in the prophetic mm. You discover you don't tell people everything you see everything you hear but also you also know who you are telling yeah. because kuna kitu nikiambia mtu mdogo wa kiroho mm-hmm. i destroy them mm-hmm. these are some of those things we have learned the hard yeah. now mm-hmm. um this god this relationship that mm-hmm. have already started mm-hmm. either they were prophetic mm-hmm. or they were as a church mm-hmm. do you d- d- is there a place to <laughs> advise the youth that because <laughs> i imagine Are there wrong relationship let me say that which you, you as maybe as a man of god mm. or as, i don't know whether it's mm. department mm. in the church mm. that you realize that mm. these people they in a wrong it is headed to how is church mm. able to handle that because mm. you've said mm. that a god relationship mm. the goal is marriage that's right and uh, do you mean that all the relationship in church should add into marriage, marriage yeah. or there are some relationship that you can see and mm. tell that these And so how do you help these guys? Um, um they are, they are, you see not everyone who comes to church has God or is in a relationship with God. And I think that's what people don't understand. When you hear people blaming us pastors and they say we encourage people to sin and they say our clown they onena kwa club, right? You see church church there are people who come to church who need to be fixed right there are people being reconciled there are people being healed and then there are those who seem like they are growing but really ideally everyone from the pastor to everyone we are all growing now i have discovered just because people are saved does not mean these people should marry because there is so much to look at remember the goal is companionship now imagine this person looks at life this way And then they are going out with a person who looks at life differently. Even without prayer and fasting, what do you think that thing is going to? If these people marry they are they will kill each other. Right? So now you imagine if they come to me and really let's assume they listen to me. I'll tell them leave each other out. Uh, run, run, flee. Rightly so. Now, this will get me into trouble, but that's the truth because how do you want to join a wedding that you know a marriage that you know that post wedding there will be trouble because when there are issues they will come to me for counseling mm-hmm. so why not fix it before we cross over mm-hmm. and you see for me marriage is not um, a do or die situation mm-hmm. like now at 
you are so anxious because you are not married. I understand. I'm not saying this because I'm married. I understand all the pressure that comes with that. Mm. But I discover marriage is a gift from the Lord. And if it's a gift from the Lord, then in the fullness of time, God will gift everyone who needs to be married. So yours may be at this age. This person may be at this age. And this is why we can't really come up and say, if you're not married by 27, you're not married by 32, you're not married. That, that's rubbish. Really, there is no scripture. For example, when you begin to look at um, the patriarchs, you think of Isaac. Let's take him at yesterday. The guy's married at 40. You think at Jacob. The guy's married at 40. But did you ever realize, strangely, we are never told how old their wives were? <laughs> you get it now so we can't come up with uh, that's why I said we have to be renewed in our mind yes. and allow the Holy Spirit to broaden our perspective yes. so we can't come up with a doctrine mm. now you you are 34 33 mm. now you feel like now I'm late my my calendar my clock my clock is ticking no no no, no. that's why people get into error mm -hmm. so are there wrong relationships yes mm -hmm. among the saved yes so, for example, imagine I am a pastor, right? Mm -hmm. So the, the major thing I do with my life is ministry. Mm -hmm. Like that's what consumes almost a hundred of my time. That's, that's what drives me everything. Mm -hmm. No, then let's assume I was single. Mm -hmm. Then I need a woman who is willing to share her husband with another woman called the Church of Jesus. Mm -hmm. So, not just tongue speaking, mm -hmm. because they are tongue speaking, who can't imagine my husband will not be sleeping by my side every night? You get it? Like Susan. So now imagine if I marry such a woman. Very godly, very prayerful, but the marriage will not work. You understand now what I'm saying? So I have discovered why we need relationship setups. And I think you need to tell people when we have dinners, we have relationship setups and all these things. They need to come. The reason we need to talk to them, and especially as who are accused of being very spiritual. Is because it will help so many people. Yes. So, for example, there's the issue of personality. Mm -hmm. We need to start. I mean, how can you marry a person who you don't even understand their personality traits? Mm -hmm. There will be trouble. There, there are habits. There is how, how have, what have they been exposed to as they grew up? So now, imagine, for example, this is a young man who grew up in a single mother's home. So, to the boy, mom is everything. So mom pays rent, mom buys food, mom does this. And let's assume this young man was never exposed to a mentor in form of a male who is taking leadership and uh, rulership of his family and authority of his family. Then he marries an amazing, those, these are very tongue-speaking believer young man. Marries a tongue-speaking, spirit-filled, godly woman who grew up in a home where the father pays the bills. The father does everything. These people in courtship, they were just praying. They were just praying and doing coffee dates and all those things. And they never got to ask themselves, what do you think of bills? Then they came to Primarito. And Primarito, we never taught them that. We just told them, as long as you are praying, Satan will run away. Right? Mm -hmm. And you see, that's a partial truth. Mm -hmm. What do you think is waiting for them? Because now they get into marriage, what okay honeymoon after whatever weeks or days. Then they'll come their bills. The lady is expecting the man, because you see the lady grew up with a, an ideal man is the father. So the lady expects the man to fit into the shoes and do it. The boy, the guy, knows that it's a woman who pays. You see now where friction comes from. So Saturn will maximize on that one. Not really because it's, it's something if they took time to speak about. It's something if they focused their attention to really understand, deliberate on it, discuss on it, it's something that they would deny certain a room. But you see now what has happened. So that's why we are saying their relationship, if people, for example, you ask me if, um, no matter how I may not talk about age, there are people now as their pastor, I know they are not yet mature and ready for a relationship. So if they come to me and they tell me they are marrying the next three, four, five, six months, as their pastor, if they hear me, I can tell them, you guys, I'm giving you another one year. Go and work on this, on this, and this. I'm observing, but also come and give me a report. You, you understand? Yes. So it's not just that you are going out with the world. This is saved and this one is unsaved. That it's wrong. Sometimes even among the Christian circles, it can be wrong. Yeah.
It's not just a note, God fool that yeah, we are uh, uh, God and uh, 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 uh. Now let me touch a very sensitive mm. area. Yes, yes. I think I, I, I like it that you have addressed about the age factor. I was able to ask mm. that. Mm. And, uh, now let me mm. address about finances. Mm-hmm. Uh, I say it is sensitive because mm. of how I want to phrase it. Uh. Oh, okay. I want to phrase it as it is. Uh, mm-hmm. That it has been said that um, mm-hmm. guys in church, mm. they, they, they not... <laughs> They're and stingy. then the church is uh, is um, because the, the truth is when people get married they need finances. That's right. Why would the church encourage mm. and do a wedding? Mm. We support people to do a wedding, even mm. the wedding to mm. our pair. Mm. Why where is the church about his mm-hmm. finances? Because mm-hmm. once we give them the wedding, mm. life there. Mm-hmm. Because uh, there's that feeling that one of the reasons as to why people are fighting mm. on marriages is mm. about finances. That's true. So now you want me to talk on uh, finances in marriage? Not finances in mm. marriage. Yeah. Mm. I, I just wanted you to speak to mm. the young people out mm. there mm-hmm. about what position one should be in mm-hmm. before they get into marriage. Ah, amazing. Amazing. This is how I look at it. Amazing. Thank you. Amazing. Um, uh, you see, the truth is, scripturally speaking, you go back to scripture. When you look at Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 19, a very profound statement money answers everything look at verse 12 of the same chapter as wisdom is a defense so is money and he says but the excellence of it if you have both you're better so you can't just talk of life without money the camera we are shooting with is money the sitting seat we are sitting on is money. anything we have it took money right so money it's uh i i i have uh counseling when you look at counseling mm-hmm. you are married you discover a eh, money you know all these other issues forget about all these other things i would tell you infidelity and all those things mm-hmm. you discover money it's key it's key in if uh, for me i look at it this way what we call financial independence mm-hmm. is uh for example if someone comes and approaches you they may not be having the millions now, but do they have a clear vision and a clear plan on how to be sound mm-hmm. and financially stable? Mm-hmm. So after they have prayed, mm-hmm. after they have said all those things, mm-hmm. I think ladies, for example, Jundi Wanaumi Asana, mm-hmm. they need to ask a very sober question. Mm-hmm. So tell me something about your financial habits. Mm-hmm. Tell me something about... Uh, financial investments that you're looking at mm-hmm. and you know financial discipline is key mm-hmm. because there are people who are broke and I think now this one men also need to ask mm-hmm. because now imagine mm-hmm. you're marrying a lady mwenye mshahara yake amalizanga by tarehe kumi mm-hmm. you should know what is happening mm-hmm. mkingia kwa nyumba atakuwa namaliza kila kitu by tarehe kumi mm-hmm. because you see what will happen marriage does what marriage does mm-hmm. marriage amplifies mm-hmm. sure. it brings more light and amplifies the whole thing mm-hmm. So I I look at it, finances, I don't think if you don't have a clear financial plan concerning your life, Mm -hmm. you as before even you bring someone else, Mm -hmm. I think you need to repent if you have brought someone else in your life, whoever you have backslidden. Mm -hmm. You see, when you look at Genesis chapter 2, for example, when you think of man, eh? Mm -hmm. in verse 15, God gives man responsibility, Mm -hmm. work, Mm -hmm. tend the ground. Mm-hmm. Work on it. Put it in check. Put it in order. Then now he introduces the woman in verse 18. Mm-hmm. So, if this man is not working, and you see working is not being in an office. Mm-hmm. Working is, is he productive? Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. If all he produces are chromosomes and hormones <laughs> and feelings, <laughs> there will be trouble. True. But also in our times, times have changed. Mm-hmm. Also the woman. Mm-hmm. I don't think there is any superman who wants to marry a potato, po- po- couch potato. Mm-hmm. Couch potato is a woman who just sits the whole day. See, like the way you're on this couch, mm-hmm. that's all she does in the house. Mm-hmm. No, no superman wants to do that. Because I look at it this way. How would you go to school, high school, campus, college and all this, mm-hmm. and then you end up nyumbani kazi yako ni kupika. So you want to tell me you cook, you cook 24 hours. You see, there will be trouble. There will be trouble. So, I think we need to mention that before pe- two people can start telling us they are marrying each other, mm-hmm. they need to be 
let's not call it financially secure. Secure in, they have systems of how to develop themselves, how to advance themselves, but also they need to be open financially. If uh, a man cannot share with you how he is doing financially, mm-hmm. run. If a woman cannot share with you how she is doing financially, in the world they say, Pesa yako ni, ya, ni yetu, na yangu ni yangu. Whoever is the party that is saying that, run. Because, again, the goal is openness. Mm-hmm. These people are supposed to be one. Mm-hmm. But now, at times, why would, why would someone who wants to share life with you mm-hmm. be hiding? I know, for example, I, you know, I joke about it, I say, if it's a woman, you need to ask them if it's Susan. Iyo nyuele ni yako? Ama ni yako nunua? Ka una nunua, una nunuanga marangapi kwa mwaka? So that would be me, uko shua on whether unaiza is a sustain this story. So there has to be a clear system. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a good clarification. That's what I wanted mm-hmm. to understand. Mm-hmm. Now, as we wind up from yes, this yes, one, yes, I'm, I'm liking it we, the way it's flowing. We have been here for long. We have <laughs> five minutes. <laughs> uh-huh. Um... I want to throw in this question. We have mm. talked about relations, relationships. Mm. Uh, mm. Uh, it has been so much hit mm. the church mm. with the very recent what happened. Mm. Uh, we lost a very... The Nigerian one. Yes. Mm-hmm. And uh, so much of it we feel mm. like the mm. church has failed us. Mm-hmm. The church had been seeing this, but mm. Kunaile church will be encouraged. Mm. What is the position of church with this? Or rather, let mm. me ask, mm. we have toxic marriages in of churches. Course. And yes, yes, yes. Wow. I think um, we should understand that in church we deal with people. Right? People who are being worked on. I think I mentioned people are being worked on. And people who have real issues. Now, and anywhere there are people, they will be toxic and all those things. So now, I look at it from um, um an, an average believer will tell you it's uh, till death do us apart. But I, I place a caveat. I, I, I place something. I, I look at it. It's till death do us apart as long as we are all in God. In God, not like we are in church. We are vibrantly in God. And I'll tell you why. If a husband is beating the wife, and uh, for example, as a policy in our ministry, if a husband beats the wife, and the wife comes to me, I promise you, and I'm, I know I'm on camera and I'm saying it. Before I pray for the wife, I'll get the husband. I have some gentlemen who can beat the, bo- the guy. Mm-hmm. You know why? Mm-hmm. Why would you beat? I have a daughter, I have a sister, and I have such daughters like you. Mm-hmm. You're doing amazing, no dent. Mm-hmm. So why would someone take you from mini mini mishkanisha rusi, then start placing dents on you? It tells me one he was not brought up well. Then two, it tells you, it tells me that he is proud, he is thinking highly of himself than he, of himself than he ought to. So we will beat you and beat you very properly. And as we're beating you, we'll be speaking in tongues. So that it will be a lesson. Then two, we will tell that daughter to leave you. You, you get it? And if they are children, we will sort them out. That's the position of the church. Because I also want to understand something that at times when we look at marriage and uh, I don't know if it's the revelation of the death then or what, pastors forget that God cares about these daughters of his and these sons of his because people are normally squeeze one a chapel. I don't know how that works. Mm-hmm. So I'm here to craft a way one a kichapo how I'll handle it. <laughs> I think I'll enroll them for what I could do class. <laughs> so, so I look at it from the perspective, God is a father, right? No sober father, I have a biological daughter. I can't imagine, I can't imagine sleeping well when she is unwell. Forget about even a man laying hands on her. And that's me. And scripture says, if us being evil can give good gifts to our children, how much more will the Lord give the Holy Spirit to those who will? So now you discover we need to understand that if someone is in a toxic relationship, we're not advocating for divorce left, right, center. But there is a stage where really you look at it. You know, it's very simple. The question should be, if someone is trying to argue and saying, Pastor, you can't say people should divorce, you just tilt the coin if it was your daughter. If it was your child, if it was your son, how would you handle it? 
and let's assume you are a sober man or a sober mother. You get it? So toxic, toxic as long as someone is in a marriage that is toxic, that will lead to death, that will lead to diseases that are incurable. The solution is simple. Run. And I've said you why. The father we serve, the God we serve, is gracious, is merciful, is restorative. So you can't stay in a, in a crazy marriage. Have you ever been, you know, I know of couples that were married for 50, 52, 53 years. Then when child are grown up, the man left and married someone else. You want to tell me that there were no red flags and all those things, but the mother persevered. In the disguise, one day he may change. But you see, the man never changed. His true colors came out after the children left home. So do I want to pastor such an atmosphere? No. Just because of what the world will say. Understand, these are people we are dealing with. When these people cry, I cry too. So which is easier? Let's fix it when it can be fixed. And you discover, again, I think it comes down to when people are called to, for example, in charismatic circles, if you call people to relationship dinners, marriage seminars, they don't want, but I call them to prophetic meetings. Oh boy, they want me to call the IDs. They want me to do all those things. It comes down to we have now to one more time begin to sensitize our people on the need for us to be open concerning our marriages, on the need for us to introduce God in our marriages, even as we have introduced him on everything. So there are toxic marriages in church, but there is a solution. We don't just pray about it. Have some people. And you know at times the toxic marriage is simple. Is um, If a young man is marrying and no one can speak and the young man hears, there is trouble already. A young woman is being married and no one can call this young woman to order. Already there is a problem. So you discover most of these toxic things is because people have overlooked so much. Yeah, they have looked so much. So that would be my small input. <laughs> wow, wow, beautiful. I think, um, my viewers, viewers, it's so unfortunate we have to come to an end. I'm mm. saying it's so unfortunate mm -hmm. because I'm thinking like we can have this talk more and more and more. Mm. And uh, I, I really appreciate that mm -hmm. time. And I'm um, what I'm so happy about is the way you've addressed that about mm. toxic mm. that we it's not in church so, mm. so let the world stop fighting pastors and mm. say pastors mm. are causing no. death in churches mm. because you had mm. one man of god mm. who is not tolerating that who is mm. not allowing that to mm. happen mm. so i think that is so encouraging because mm. we do not want to lose life no because one of issues no one should die marriages no huh? one wow mm. Mm. thank you very much mm. maybe i'll give you a, a time maybe to just do a parting shot okay. uh yes and uh and invite people to church it, it's never Even complete without oh amazing <laughs> amazing yes. so i'm um, i'm so glad that you could uh, you could join us this this morning this evening from wherever you are this afternoon um uh, i look forward to seeing you in church we are in several locations i believe uh, that them susan will be able to to feature to feature the several locations yes. but uh, the headquarters is here in zimmerman we are in zimmerman and uh, it will be a blessing to see you in any one of our fellowships on Tuesday evening, Thursday evening, and Sunday morning to the glory of the Lord. And then we also have a singles dinner. When is that again? On 8th of, um, 8th of July. 8th of July, yeah, thank you. On 8th of July. So I look forward, again, the poster will be shared somewhere. So I look forward to seeing you. It will be an awesome, awesome time. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for sharing. Please don't keep quiet with this message. Share it with someone. Send it to at least one friend. Don't be quiet. Uh, if you have an issue, I think uh, we can tell them we are open to, to see them. They can visit us. You have an issue on anything, whether it's healing, whether it's your marriage not working, whether it's your job not working. I think uh, that them Susan will share our contact somewhere here. Yeah. And uh, I'll be so glad to have a sit down with you here in the office. And Jesus will be glorified. Thank you for having me. Amen. Amen. Asante sana for having me. Baraka sana. And um, uh, I'm sorry you came to the office. I didn't give you some water. <laughs> so I've been looking at these guys with me in the studio. I was wondering how could pay magic. Um, I'm sorry this is coffee. It's mine. Next time I'll talk to mama. we make you some. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you, you sir. for gracing my studio. <laughs> Bye. Cheers.